World leaders are gathering in the Indian capital, New Delhi, for the G20 summit. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi kicked off the weekend summit by welcoming the African Union as the group's newest permanent member. Leaders are expected to address a range of issues from climate change to the war in Ukraine. The G20 is a group of 19 of the world's leading economies plus the European Union. The leaders of China and Russia are not attending the summit. DW's uh, Delhi bureau chief, Amrita Chima, is at the summit for us. Amrita, as you well know, delegates there have agreed on making the African Union a permanent member of the G20, a group that, of course, traditionally represents the world's richest countries. What's the thinking behind bringing the African Union in? Michael, it was very important for India to make its presidency more representative, to make the G20 more representative. So leaders who have gathered in this building just behind me uh, decided in the opening session today that the African Union would be a part, a permanent member of the G20. So it's going to be G20 plus one. And that one African Union vote brings 55 countries behind it. Now, India always said that the G20 had to reflect the emerging economies as well as the rich countries which already are in the G20. And it was an important part of its agenda to have groups like the uh, African Union be part of this. And this was an initiative led by India, but supported by every one of the G20 countries who were there. Because mm. in the G20, all decisions have to be by consensus and every single country supported India's initiative. It bears repeating two key leaders are not present at the summit, China's Xi and Russia's Putin. How's it going without them? Well, you know, even though uh, President Xi Jinping and uh, President Vladimir Putin are not here, their representatives are here. Now, we have uh, Sergei Lavrov representing Vladimir Putin, and we have uh, Premier Li Chiang representing uh, Xi Jinping. So they are trusted lieutenants of their leaders and good representatives of their countries. So the voices of Russia and China are very much at the table at this G20. But of mm. course, it's not the same as having the leaders themselves. Now, I talked to a couple of uh, uh, analysts about what they felt about that and some said actually it works really well for Prime Minister Modi because he now gets the ch uh, chance to shine even brighter without China there and but others said well it was a big snub by China that uh, lead, um, Xi Jinping hasn't come here. I'm curious how likely is it this summit will produce consensus agreements on major issues? Well, it's looking increasingly likely, Michael. Um, Prime Minister Modi began his opening remarks by saying that there was a trust deficit uh, in the world, and he called the world to come together and build trust and confidence. So I think that was an appeal to all the leaders there, that they must pull together and come on this particular issue of Ukraine, which has divided the whole G20. Now, we are getting reports coming in which say that there is a draft communique which is uh, going to be submitted to the leaders, and the draft communique has some more details that have come in in the press. One of them is that sanctions will not be mentioned. Another one says it will specifically talk about Russia's war in Ukraine as opposed to with Ukraine. And also uh, um, a sentence which uh, Prime Minister Modi used with, in a meeting with President Putin and which was in the Bali Declaration, this is not an era of war, will also be in the new Delhi Declaration. Having said that, this is a draft which is being submitted now to the leaders. And our diplomatic sources say that they are all satisfied with it, but they're still not sure whether Russia and China will sign off on this draft communique. DW's Delhi Bureau Chief Amrita Chima, many, many thanks.